So I loved how President Uchtdorf ended women's conference and then he began Saturday morning general conference. So I have his talks back to back, which is always awesome. And so I want to talk about a Saturday morning address. I loved that so much. He talked about how we all have an inner guidance system. He said that God knows all about us. And he said, come follow me. That's the Savior's message to us. That's his invitation. Come follow me. We don't have to get caught up in the crossfire of the division that's going on in our country and in our church. We can follow the Savior. We can turn away from it and follow him. He said, if you listen, he will speak to you today. And that's exactly what happened for me. And I hope that's what happened for you as well. He said, set your heart towards the light. So again, it's that love. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? That's when the light bulb came on and I had this thought during his talk that with everything we do, it goes back to that age old saying, what would Jesus do? But it is so true. But another way you could, you could phrase that is, is this something that is bringing me closer to the light or bringing me into the darkness? Is it pulling me towards the light or away from the light? Is it building my relationship with Jesus Christ or is it tearing it down? Is it strengthening my love and my relationships with my family, with my spouse, or is it tearing it down and pulling me away? That's how we can gauge everything in our life. Now that holds true for doctrines, teachings, um, groups that we're a part of, idols in our life, things that we spend a lot of our time doing. Look at all these things that are going on in our lives and are they creating stronger bonds and relationships with our spouse and with our children and with our families? Are they creating a stronger relationship between us and our Savior? Are we hearing Him speak to us more? Are we feeling His presence around us? Are these activities and teachings and doctrines helping us understand the nature of who He really is? Are they encouraging us to know Him better? Are they allowing us to spend more time getting to know Him to better? Because it's one thing to create a desire to want to know Him better, but another thing to actually take the time to do that. Are we spending time with our Savior Jesus Christ, getting to know Him, getting to know our Father in Heaven? Are we doing that? He said, when you follow Christ, two things are going to happen. One, your life will be better. That is so true. And two, God will use you to make the lives of others better. That's what we all should be doing right now. Every activity that we pursue, everything that we put our time and effort into, it should be building up the kingdom. It should be helping make the lives of others better. What light are we bringing into the world? How are we serving our brothers and sisters? How are we making them feel better? <laughs> are we making them feel better? He said our lives will seem more difficult when we try to live our faith. Now that is so true. Again, I just want to say that I've had the thought pressed upon my mind over and over that if you're not experiencing any challenges or difficulties or persecutions in your life, then you are not living your faith the way that you should be. You're a terror. You're a terror <laughs> if you're not experiencing persecution and struggles and trials and challenges for the things that you share, the things that you stand up for, the way that you live. If you're not standing out and you're not experiencing any discomfort, you're too comfortable where you're at. You're a terror. I talk about that group of terrors. You're afraid of that discomfort. You're afraid of persecution. You're afraid of what the world's going to say. So you stand in your comfort zone and you don't say anything at all. And you, you live what's comfortable for you. But he's telling us right here, and the Lord tells us in scripture, that we are to suffer persecutions for his name. <laughs> we will be persecuted for his name, for standing up for his gospel, for living his gospel. And, and that should tell you right there, that should help you gauge where you're at in your life and what you're doing versus what you should be doing based on challenges you're experiencing and discomfort that you're experiencing and persecutions that you're experiencing even among those that you love. But he said by doing this and enduring this, it will remove the barriers to feel God's love. So I thought that was powerful. If we can't feel God's love, how can we love ourselves? If we can't feel the love that God has for us, how can we extend love to others? We have to feel that love. We have to remove those barriers. It starts with our heart. He said we must be faithful in a dark world. 
We won't be abandoned. We won't be forgotten. Remember, we're written on the palm of his hand. He says, even if you stumble, don't be afraid because all things will work together for your good. And the Lord promises us that. Okay, he says, do you want to feel joy and peace? Turn towards the light. I have that underlined. Turn towards the light. Life will be more purposeful. Do you feel like you have a purpose? Do you feel like you're living your purpose, that you are doing what you were sent here to do? Because I believe that everybody's purpose has to do with testifying of Jesus Christ in one way or another. We came here to testify of him. We came here to share that good news. That's what we came here to do. We all came here to be a reflection of his light in a dark world. Okay, our journey should not focus on our own life. We shouldn't have selfish motives. He said our journey should be about God's other children. We should be investing our time and efforts in building them up, lifting them up, serving them, loving them. That's how we grow the kingdom. We don't grow the kingdom when we're just focusing on ourselves. <laughs> the kingdom's not going to grow when we're just focusing on us. He said we don't need to be something amazing in order for God to use us. He says it's about our choices. God recognizes and watches the choices that we're making. And, ba and based on those choices, will determine how God's going to use us or whether he's going to use us. God uses weak things to confound the mighty. Okay, I love how he talked about sacrifices. Sacrifices are needed to build the kingdom of God. Are you making sacrifices? Are you giving things up? Again, that goes back to my false traditions video. I talked a lot in there about things that we can give up, things that the Lord asks us individually to give up in our personal lives to make us better, to strengthen us, to bring us closer to him. And so sacrifice is required to build the kingdom. God uses imperfect people for his purposes. Um, if you turn your heart towards him, he will use you. He said, reach out, encourage, and heal all. He said, embrace the gospel in faith and in deed. We have to be showing it in our actions. We have to be a people that act upon our faith. Bonnie Oscarson went on to talk about serving our ward families and how our wards truly are our families. And if you don't feel that way about your ward, you have some reassessing and reanalyzing to do with yourself. Look deep inside and figure out what's going on and what you can do to change that because we should love our ward the way that we love our own family. Our ward should feel like family. We should be serving each other, reaching out to each other, relying on each other, lifting one another's burdens. That's what our wards are for. I loved Elder Oaks's talk. He talked about the unique doctrine of the LDS Church, and that's true, we are unique. We're not to blend in with the world. We're definitely to be a peculiar people. He talked about, do you want to gain the whole world just to lose your soul? No. <laughs> Who would want that? He said, you're not of the world. The world actually despises you. The world hates you. The wisdom of the world is foolishness. And he talked about the traditions of men, the foolish traditions. Again, that goes back to my video on false traditions. I just see such a theme here, such a pattern. He said, a friend of the world is an enemy to God. I talk about that in my Tears article. Okay, he talked about Lehi's dream. Now, I've been seeing Lehi's dream as a big part of all of this. I keep bringing it up. It keeps coming to mind. I know I mentioned it in my Tears article. He talked about Lehi's dream. He said, exaltation in families is more than just salvation. He said, salvation is an individual matter. But exaltation is a family matter. That's what makes our church so unique, is we focus on the family. We are exalted as a family. We're exalted as family units. We are families forever. Those relationships don't just end here on this earth when we die. If we make those covenants and we seek that path, we can be families forever, exalted on high together. Of course, if that's not what we want, we are just going to be angels serving our God in the next life. Brothers and sisters, parents, we won't be recognized as family units. We won't be married to our spouses anymore. We will just be angels serving God. But if we want to arise to something higher, we have that opportunity to be sealed as families, to be recognized as a family unit forever, and to be exalted together to something even greater. The Lord wants the best for us. 
He said, this life is the time to prepare to meet God. Are you preparing or are you just having fun? <laughs> are you going with the ways of the world, focusing on, on, on the world and what's in and what's hot and what's trendy and, and what everybody else is doing and what everybody else is talking about? Is that where your focus is? Or are you looking inward and doing everything you can every day to prepare yourself to meet God, to get right with yourself? Are you turning inward or are you looking outward? He says that as we try to change ourselves, this can cause conflict with others. We talked about that in my last few videos about false traditions. Following God can lead to challenges. There it is again, you guys. They're telling us the truth. Choose the Lord's way instead of the world's way. On to John C. Pingree. He said, there's an important work just for you. We have pre-earth assignments. We're here on an assignment. We're here on a mission. Are we fulfilling those assignments? God uses ordinary people. There it is again, you guys. God has more planned for you than you do for yourself. He says, we're here to bless others. To every man and woman is given a gift. I love this. He spends the rest of his talk talking about spiritual gifts and how he gives them to every man and every woman. He doesn't say to every LDS man and every LDS woman, to every Mormon man, to every Mormon woman. He says to every man and every woman is given a gift, spiritual gifts. We have divine assignments and we've been given those gifts to carry out our assignments. We've all been given those assignments, not just some of us, not just members of the church, all of God's children have a divine assignment that's specific to their mission and they've been given gifts to carry out those missions. We must be clean. We must be clean in order to access and use those gifts. For the Lord to work within us, we have to be a pure and holy vessel. He says we need to emulate humility. We need to give glory to God in everything that we do. Everything that we learn, everything that we teach, everything that we share, everything that we accomplish, we give that glory to God. It's because of Him that we have the very life that we have. Okay, he talked about Mother Teresa. I know I've mentioned her before as an example in talking about spiritual gifts, how there's many of God's children from all different backgrounds who have done amazing things on this earth to benefit the children of God. And they've done it using their spiritual gifts. They've done it by being a clean and pure and holy vessel for the Lord. We need to access God's strength. And we need to yield to God's will. He will use us. There it is again. I'm seeing this theme. Remember, the speakers in conference are not given a topic to speak about. They are led through the Holy Spirit on what to speak about. The Holy Spirit is clearly giving us a theme. This message clearly is from the Lord. Okay, Todd D. Christofferson, absolutely love him. He talked about being one with the Savior. It is so important to have that close relationship with the Savior, to be one with him and be one with his will. He said, put off the natural man. That's what we've been talking about. Become saints. Be like the Savior. He satisfied justice for us because he was sinless. We can have confidence in that. We need to seek to have Christ dwell within us. <laughs> this goes back to a comment from one of my bullies who said that Christ cannot be within us. That's too intimate. He doesn't do that. <laughs> Todd D. Christofferson says the opposite. He says we need to seek to have Christ dwell within us. It doesn't get more intimate than that. He said, service is the fiber of an exalted life. There it is again. If we want to be lifted up with our Savior Jesus Christ, if we want to be exalted on high with him, we have to be like him. He was all about service. We have to serve. It's got to be the very fiber of us. He talked about holiness unto the Lord. How in the early years of the church, the saints used this phrase everywhere. He's found it engraved on so many artifacts. You know, I just visited the Salt Lake Temple last week and I zoomed in with my camera and took a picture of the sign that says holiness unto the Lord. It's powerful. We have to be holy. It starts with ourselves and then we have to make our homes holy. And then we have to commit to standing in holy places. He mentioned what lack I yet. Now I mentioned that in my recent video, I talked about the parable of the rich man. <laughs> He said, Lord, Lord, I'll do anything for you. What, what can I do to follow you? And the Lord said, sell everything you own and come follow me. And he couldn't do that. 
So are there things we're still hanging on to? Are there things? Are there things in our lives that we're not willing to sacrifice in order to walk with the Lord? He said, never be content or discouraged with where you're at. I thought that was powerful. Never be happy and satisfied with where you're at. Don't ever settle for where you're at and don't be discouraged with where you're at. Always be grateful for where the Lord is taking you. Always be grateful for where you're at on your journey. He said, spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. There it is again. We need to be taking that time to be alone with our Savior so that we can develop that personal relationship with Him, so that we can recognize His voice, and that we can hear our shepherd when He calls our name. I loved Elder Holland's talk. I've got stars and hearts. <laughs> he said, he talked about blessing those that curse us. There it is, you guys. We have to love our enemies. We have to love them. We have to pray for them. He said, do good to those who hate us. There it is again. Be perfect. Now he reminds us. He reminds us that we are to do all that we can to try to be like our Savior Jesus Christ. We are commanded to be perfect, to try our best, and the Savior will make up the difference. He talks about covenants and commandments and curses and condemnations. Those are on the opposite end of the spectrum. You have your, your covenants and your commandments. And then if you're not following those and keeping those, then you're going to receive the curses and the condemnations. You're never in the middle. You're either being blessed and you're keeping those covenants and commandments and you're honoring them every day of your life, or you're, you're experiencing curses and condemnation. Um, he said, but we should not beat ourselves up. I know I had a lot of commenters writing me saying, you know what, I'm trying so hard to do so many things right in my life, but I'm never going to be perfect. I have, too many mis I have too many faults. I've made too many mistakes. I'm so weak. I struggle with so many things. We all do. <laughs> Don't think just for a minute you're the only one. We all do. We're all imperfect. We all have things that we're constantly working on. We're constantly trying to change. But if we're relying on our Savior Jesus Christ to create that change with us, we don't have to worry. We don't have to put ourselves down and drag ourselves through the mud. We can have hope that through our Savior Jesus Christ, we can be changed. He has that power to change us, not us. We can't change ourselves. We change through His power. It's by the grace of God that we change. It's by the grace of God that we are saved from ourselves. He said we live in a fallen world and a celestial kingdom. And at least God is perfect. At least we can have confidence that God is perfect. The gospel is for the perfecting of the saints. It's not the other way around. Because we're perfect, we're blessed with the gospel. No, no, no. <laughs> the gospel, the very purpose of it, is for the perfecting of imperfect people. So have peace in that. Love God with all your might, mind, and strength. He said perfection is a gift. It's not something to be feared. It's not something to be resented. It's a gift that God gives us. Through him, we are made perfect because of that gift. He said we need to be more godlike. In the little things, we need to be more godlike. Avoid toxic perfectionism. Okay, Gary E. Stevenson mentioned the total solar eclipse. He said we need to start looking at things through the Spirit, and he called them gospel glasses. I've been using that in my prayers. I love it. I always ask Heavenly Father to help me see his children the way that he sees them. But now it's easier just to say, Lord, please give me gospel glasses. <laughs> and he knows what I'm talking about. I love that. Through gospel glasses, we're given an eternal view, and that changes everything. Okay, so we talked about social media and said that because of this, we're losing personal conversation. We're not having these intimate conversations with each other anymore. We're communicating through emojis, <laughs> through texting, through emails. And because of that, we're losing that human connection. This is so important that we have that. That's how we feel those real emotions. That's how we transfer that love. There's so much more you can say through a smile with your eyes and a smile on your face than you can with an emoji. <laughs> he said to avoid comparison. And he said pride leads to anger and hatred. And I see that's what's going on with all of this division that's going on in the country. There's pride on both sides of every argument. There's somebody with pride and behind that pride is anger and hatred. And behind that anger and hatred is fear. 
Fear is the root of all anger. People need to ask themselves, what is it I'm afraid of? Why am I reacting this way? Why is this hurting me? Why am I feeling torn inside? Why am I feeling confused? Why am I feeling doubt? Where is this all coming from? It would do us all some good to reevaluate who we really are on the inside, what our motives are, and what's really in our heart. Okay, I loved Quentin L. Cook. He made some great points. He talked about this precious mortal life is a short time. Again, we're here to prepare to meet God. There it is again. Um, he talked about pride. He talked about the world's view of happiness. Again, this reminds me of Lehi's dream and the great and spacious building. He said, the natural man is an enemy to God. There it is again. We need to be submissive, meek, and full of love. We need to emulate our Savior. He talked about attacking others on social media. <laughs> there it is again. He said, we need to be more modest and humble in all that we do. He said, you are not better than anyone else. We all need to remember that. Again, President Uchtdorf talked about that. He talked about the Democrats and the Republicans. And, you know, no matter what the issue is, no matter what side you're on, no matter what group you belong to, whether religious or political or even your ethnicity, we all need to be more modest and more humble. We need to forgive others. There's a story that I share in my Wheat and Tears article. You need to check it out. It's an incredible experience somebody had about learning what happens after this life if we haven't learned to forgive while in this life. Even if there's just one person in your life who's rubbed you the wrong way and you feel justified in your feelings, you feel justified in remaining hurt, you feel justified in holding a grudge towards that person or always talking bad about them or always avoiding them and, and being angry with them, if you feel justified in that, you are harboring unforgiveness in your heart and that's only gonna be for your own destruction. You've got to get right with yourself. You've got to get right with the Lord. You've got to get right with the people in your life. You have to forgive. You know, he talked about weakness and how it humbles us. The Lord is going to show us our weaknesses in this last day right now. Our weaknesses are going to be exposed. And that shouldn't be a scary thing. It shouldn't be something that, that bothers us or frustrates us. We should embrace that because God is showing us our weaknesses. These are the areas where he's going to strengthen us. He's going to use those weaknesses to bring us down to humility because when we're humble, we're going to turn to him. We're going to hear him. We're going to listen to him and then he can help us and then he can change us. Okay, Elder Rasband talked about preaching to the wicked. He talked about obeying God. Um, coincidences are not coincidences. I know I've shared a lot of things in my videos and on my posts and I always say I don't believe that was a coincidence. I've had people writing me and sharing with me amazing things that are happening to them right now and they're saying I don't believe this was a coincidence. I don't believe that finding your message and it confirming what the Spirit's been telling me is a coincidence. He said God puts miracles all around us. We're all brothers and sisters in the cause for Christ. All of us not just members of the church, all of us. He talked about Saul, there it is. Saul was divinely redirected. We can progress to places that we've never even imagined. So he gives us hope. Okay, oh Vincent Halleck. He talked about the widow's might and how she gave everything. This reminds me again of the parable of the rich man. And he talked about putting aside tradition and culture. There it is again, you guys. The Lord's telling us something. Putting aside tradition and culture to follow the Lord, to do what's right. He talked about the heart of the widow and said, We will feel truth and give all to embrace it. Okay, Russell M. Nelson, amazing talk. He asked, How precious is the Book of Mormon to you? He mentioned three points. He said, What would your life be like without the Book of Mormon? What would you not know? And what would you not have? These are powerful questions that we should all be asking ourselves to help appreciate what it is we really do have. He said what's great about the Book of Mormon is it teaches us what, it's, what it means to be truly born again. That's what we're here to learn. We're, we're not just to be baptized in the flesh and call it good. We're to continue to seek after we've been baptized to be born again of the Spirit, to be baptized of the Spirit, to feel that mighty change of heart come over us where we only desire to do good in all things. We only desire the will of God. Nothing else stands in our way. That's our utmost, strongest desire. 
He said the Book of Mormon reveals Satan's tactics, how he works to bring us down, how he works to deceive us. He talked about false traditions. <laughs> the Book of Mormon teaches on false traditions. He said it shatters our false beliefs. The Book of Mormon has the power to heal, to comfort, to restore, and to wake people up. We need to be reading our Book of Mormon every day. And in addition to reading it, we need to be studying it and feasting upon it. Hey, Jean Bingham, she talked about finding joy in Jesus Christ. She said he redeems us only with invitation. He's not going to force anything upon us. He recognizes and respects our will. It's not until we invite him into our hearts and invite him into our lives to change us that he's going to redeem us. She again says it right here. Make time to know Jesus. We keep hearing that over and over. Okay, Donald Hallstrom talked about miracles. Miracles happen after we exercise our faith. We have to have faith in God's will. When he asks us to do things that are out of our comfort zone or that are scary for us, he's asking us to set aside things of the world, to sacrifice traditions, to give up things that we've loved so much. When we set aside that fear, and we exercise our faith just to do his will and trust that he knows best, that's when the miracles happen. All right, David Bednar, I've got a huge star right here. He's always good. He talked about we run so fast that we forget where we are going. He talked about the importance of the Sabbath day and making it holy. Again, it's about being at the right places, at the right times, doing the right things. That all applies to the Sabbath day. He talked about the doctrines, the ordinances, the covenants, and the promises. These all encompass Heavenly Father's plan. He said we need to try to escape the corruption of the world. Again, Lehi's dream. Escape the great and spacious building. Escape Babylon. He talked about the mighty change that takes place within our heart. There it is again. He said be born again. We too often allow ourselves to come down to the level of the world. It's too easy sometimes. This is so funny, you guys, because I literally said these exact words to someone who I love very much right before conference started, and then this person heard it right here, and it was a second witness to that person. I felt the Spirit overcome me, and I said to this person, our attitude about the Sabbath day is a reflection of our attitude towards God. Listen to what David Bednar says. Our demeanor on the Sabbath is a sign of our love to Him. Look to God and live. Now, I continued to hear that throughout conference. Look to God and live. He is life. When we go towards the light and everything we're doing in our life is bringing us closer to Him and closer to that light, we have life. We're progressing. We're going up. We're living. When we pull away from that light and we move towards darkness, we are degressing. We're dying. We're becoming closer to death. So do we want life or do we want death? Do we want God's plan or do we want Satan's plan? Do we want to follow the gospel and the light or follow the world? Okay, he talked about sacred time and space are in the temple and on the Sabbath day. Focus our attention on the Godhead and the promises. He said all the good things that we do in the church are vital. He said they're vital but insufficient. <laughs> the home is always priority. What we do in our homes and in our sacred space is pivotal to our partaking in the divine nature. Remember, we're here to become like him. We're here to receive that divine nature. The gospel is a tapestry of truth, not a list of mundane tasks. When you do not what I say, you have no promise. Okay, W. Christopher Waddell. He said, we find ourselves sometimes on an unexpected path. He talked about the challenges of mortality, hope, and peace. He said those in most need of blessings and hope and peace and healing are usually the ones who turn away from Jesus. I found that interesting. There it is again. He says, look to God and live. <laughs> there are so many repeated messages and patterns throughout all of conference. He said, put your trust in God and he will support you. 
he talked about frequent and sincere prayer and fasting. You guys, we need to be fasting more than just fast Sunday once a month. We truly need to become people who are a people of fasting. We need to be fasting a couple times a week. That's how we're gonna see miracles in our life. That's how we're gonna see change happen within us. We need to be a people of prayer and fasting, not just once a month, not just praying once a day, but doing it all the time. It needs to be the very essence of who we are. He said, how we respond in all things is a choice. Choose Jesus. All right, W. Craig's Wick. He again says right here, pray for your enemies. Look beyond what you see. Again, look at everyone through gospel glasses. Look at others through the eyes of Jesus. He said to accept and love others does not mean we need to accept their ideas. So again, there's a way to stand up for truth and righteousness, but to still love those around you. Okay, I have this thought as, as I continue to hear about the iron rod. We know that the iron rod is the word of God. We know that another name for our Savior Jesus Christ is the word. That is in scripture, that he is called the word. So when I hear that we're to hold tight and cling tight to the iron rod because it's the word of God, we're to hold tight to the word of God, I imagine myself holding my Savior's hand tight, holding his hand tight. We are to not let go of his hand. Then I have the thought that we need to be dedicating and blessing our homes, not just once. Because think about it, you dedicate and you bless your home, but then we're always inviting things of the world into our home. Whether it's through the people we invite in our homes, the music we play, the media we allow in through the TV, we're inviting the world into our home. We're constantly desecrating our homes. We need to be blessing and rededicating our homes often. That's a form of protection. Henry B. Eyring again brings up the Book of Mormon. He says, the Book of Mormon is the word of God. It is the word. It is a testament of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to ponder the scripture more intently. He talked about optimism and what lies ahead, that we don't need to be afraid. We need to increase our desire to rescue others. If we sow good, we're going to reap good. He said, we need to be fearless. When we're on the Lord's side, we need not fear. He said we need to pray for charity and follow the prophet's counsel. And then he also said that sometimes you will be the angel that God sends. So again, that goes along with service. God's going to use us when we're willing. He said the generation after us. Now when he said us, I'm not sure if he was referring to the apostles that he's currently serving with and their generation and he was referring to us as the generation after, but he said the generation after us will face the hardest things of the last days. I believe that's coming. I believe that's what we're going into right now. And he said, faith defeats fear. We've got to have faith. M. Russell Ballard, he talked about faith in every footstep. I believe that was also a song that was sung at conference was faith in every footstep. He reminded us through everything that he said, he reminded us that the trek back to Heavenly Father is what's most important. He talked about the signs of the end of the world. He said, do not be deceived. That's one of the signs we're given is that many will come to deceive us. Even the very elect will be deceived. Now, as we listen to his talk, if anything pricked at our hearts, if we were offended in any way, we need to reevaluate ourselves and ask ourselves why. <laughs> Because when you've been born again of the Spirit, you have no room for offense in your heart. You don't feel offended. You feel love. And so if we've been offended by an apostle's words, we really need to look inward and reevaluate what's in our hearts. Maybe we need to do some spiritual cleaning. If our pride has been pricked, that says something about us. That's a clue that we need to make some changes. We really need to be grateful for these talks. We really need to be grateful for the Lord showing us areas where we can make improvement in our own lives, not because he's punishing us, but because he loves us. He says we should never be misusing the Savior's name in anything that we do. We should be using our efforts to find and teach God's children. Is that what we're doing? Are we investing all of our time and our energy to find God's children and to teach them? Are we making our hearts pure? Are we building up the kingdom? If our focus is on financial prosperity and financial gain and building up our own empire of riches, <laughs> if that's what our focus is on, our heart is in the wrong place. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be. 
we, we, we have to remember that our treasures, our heavenly treasures, they're eternal rewards. That's where our focus needs to be. All right. John L. Cock talked about not labeling others. I talk about this in my Wheat and Tares article. We should not be labeling others. Our opinions should reflect how we feel about the Savior. So think about it. If you're a very opinionated person and you're going out like the Pharisees, I talk about this again in my Wheat and Tares article. If you're pointing your fingers at everyone in the church and everyone in your ward and people in your family and in your neighborhood, and you're pointing out all their mistakes, all their errors, all the things that you think they're doing wrong, all the ways that you think they're being deceived, all the false teachings that you think that, that they believe, that reflects how you feel about your Savior Jesus Christ. If your opinion of others is that they're children of God and you love them and they're not perfect, but neither are you, that reflects how you feel about your Savior Jesus Christ. He said we need to be one. Okay, the messages went on to talk about do we have a spirit of fear or a spirit of faith? Are we acting from a spirit of fear? That will determine whose side we're really on. Hard is good. Do we have the faith to trust him? Remember, hard is not a bad thing, it's good. Okay, Adilson de Paula Perella mentioned three important points. Number one, God calls prophets, seers, and revelators. Number two, the true nature of God. And number three, eternal life. He said th these are the three truths that we learn through the gospel. And he said we need to act when the prophets speak. We don't just listen to conference and say, yeah, those were nice words. I liked his talk. I didn't like his talk so much. This was okay. This was a little bit better. Yeah, it was nice. And then we forget about it till six months later. No, we need to write down what the Lord is speaking to us through the mouths of our prophets and apostles. And then we need to act. That truly demonstrates our faith and the relationship we have with our Father in heaven. Ian Anderson. He talked about building ourselves on the rock of Jesus, all that we can to fortify ourselves against the enemy. We must act on his teachings. We must ask of God. We must ponder the Book of Mormon. He says we don't always get an answer to every question right away, but this is the purpose of faith. Okay, Jose Alonzo said we need to love one another and forgive all. There it is again. We can be healed through forgiveness. Did you catch that? We can be healed through forgiveness. Elder Anderson closed conference so nicely. He reiterated that trusting in the words of our leaders is vital. We have to trust their words. Just after the passing of Elder Robert Hales, he touched on some of the message that Elder Hales had prepared for conference that he wasn't able to share. And he said, when we choose to have faith, we are prepared to stand in the presence of God. We are prepared to meet the Savior when he comes. It's all about having that faith. That faith needs to be the core of everything that we do. He said, don't be surprised when the words of the apostles run counter to your own thinking. There were so many people who said they were rubbed the wrong way by certain talks in this conference, you guys. Elder Anderson tells us right there, we shouldn't be surprised when the words of the apostles run counter to our own thinking. That shouldn't be a surprise to us. We are rooted in Babylon. They are trying to pull us up out of Babylon. And um, that shouldn't surprise us one bit. He said, we need to act on the promptings from conference and we will be blessed. Again, act. We need to act on the words. We need to act on the promptings. So I just want to sum this up by saying that I felt a strong theme and a strong message of service and love, being one with the Lord, being one with his will. And when we're one with him, we're going to naturally have that charity. We're going to naturally want to serve and love, bless and pray for our enemies. That is so vital in this day that we're living in, you guys. I heard that we need to exercise more caution in the things that we're participating in, in the people that we're associating with, in the teachings that we're learning. We need to use caution because Satan is working harder than ever right now to deceive us, to pull us away from the church, to have us be separated amongst the terrors. He wants us to go off with the terrors and he wants us to be burned in the field. He doesn't want us to be picked up with the wheat. He's going to do everything that he can 
to find our weaknesses and attack those, to cause us to feel hurt, to cause us to feel offended, to cause us to feel misunderstood, to cause us to question things that we felt so confident about. But remember, all those feelings are not of the Lord, they're of the adversary. If you have felt peace about certain things in your life, then certainly you need to trust those feelings and those promptings as personal revelation for your own life. These apostles have only asked us to exercise caution, which is very wise counsel. We need to be exercising caution in all that we're doing. Is it bringing us closer to our Savior? Is it helping us build the kingdom? Or is it pulling us away? Is it sending our focus in another direction? Are we putting other things above our Savior Jesus Christ? Are we putting our faith and our trust in other teachings and objects and people and images and processes and belief systems that are giving us those soothing feelings that we want of peace and joy and comfort when we should be getting it directly from our Savior Jesus Christ. So that's what I gathered from this conference as we're living in a day and age where Satan's really going to be pulling on that. He's really going to be playing on that. He's going to help us try to find comfort and peace and love and hope in all the wrong places. He's going to try to deceive us. Remember, the source always comes directly from our Savior Jesus Christ. That is where we get it. We won't go astray if we stay close to Him and we develop that personal relationship with Him. We will not be deceived. We will not be led astray. We can have that confidence and peace. I hope you enjoyed conference as much as I did. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next time.